everyone, and welcome to another edition of Connecting with Kim here on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network. You can also catch us on Sun Radio 96.3 FM and on stream, and you can watch us on watch.tbae.net, and of course we're on TBAE two times a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we're so glad you tuned in today. So my guest in the chair today is Mr. Denny Hardy, and Denny Hardy is the past potentate of the Egypt Shrine, and that was in 2019, and he's also the president of the Sun City Center Shrine Club. Welcome, Denny, to Connecting with Kim on TBAE. Thank you, Kim. It's good to be back with you. It's wonderful to have you in the chair again. For those of you who don't know, I've interviewed Denny several times on uh, Sun Radio, on my uh, original uh, radio show, and we had many, many things to talk about. But since this is his first time on the show on TBAE, we'll cover some of the same ground just so that you get to know him. So as you know, when you're watching the show, I always allow my guests to start off with talking about themselves and their journey through life to this point. So Denny, take it away. Well, thank you. Um, I retired from the military in 2009, Army. I had uh, 21 years. And when I was stationed here in, at McDill, I had the opportunity to join the Shriners. It was the best thing I've ever done. And I, we started out on motorcycles. I was on the drill team. And I had back surgery one year and I couldn't ride. So the clowns hosted the children's Christmas party. And I got to get on the floor and play with the kids. And I was smitten at that point. It was all over with. So I got off the motorcycle, became a clown. I've been a clown since 2009, and I have loved every day of it. 2019, I was potentate, and now I serve Brandon Shrine Club and Sun City Shrine Club. Oh, okay. I didn't know about the Brandon part. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, so you're president of the Sun City Center Shrine Club, yeah. but you're also, what's your position at the Brandon Club? I'm on the board of directors. Okay. Um, and I do all I do a lot of the maintenance with the guys there, so we're we're upgrading the the building and doing stuff like that. So I get to do a lot of the construction stuff. Great. Now, where are you from originally, Denny? And we should share that with the folks out there. Originally, I'm from Indiana, Southern Indiana, a little town called Mount Vernon. Had like one flashing light in the middle. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> I brought that up because I'm originally from Indiana, from Indianapolis, Indiana, yep. and I know where Mount Vernon is. So yes, I wanted to be sure that everybody <laughs> knew that we are fellow Hoosiers. Yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, you were on the, uh, you were in the military. You got introduced to the shrine. Uh, you uh, became uh, in the motorcycle corps. And then you joined the clown. And so tell me what happened after that. What, what, how did that evolve? Well, once you get into the clowns you, and you decide what kind of clown you want to be, you kind of let the clown find you. And uh, I became Dimbo the hobo. Um, I love being a hobo because when you're a clown, you have this alter ego that gets to come out. And, uh, and he, my, my alter ego loves to come out and play. So we have a lot of fun. Uh, and then I was interested in the leadership of the Shrine. Uh, I've been leader in the military at all the different levels. And 2015, I got on the board of directors there, what we call the Divan. Mm -hmm. And then I spent my five years on the board. Now I just support the temple in any way I can, mainly by doing the, the Shrine Clubs here in the local area. That's how I serve the, the temple now. Now, for people that might not be familiar with the Shrine organization, now, I, I, I'd find that hard to kind of hard to believe people out there because, you know, they have the Shriners Hospitals and they do excellent work and uh, they have lots of fundraising activities. But just in case we have some folks out there that are not familiar with Shrine and what being a potentate and all that is, maybe we ought to set them through that a little bit. Okay. The, the potentate is a fancy word um, for CEO. Uh, you, there's five members uh, that are elected by the nobility, the membership, and then you have a treasurer and a secretary, which we call a recorder. That's the seven members that run. And, and when we say temple, it's not a church or anything like that. That's just what we call our building. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just completed construction on a new building there on South 41 on Palm River. Beautiful building. Oh, it's beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. And... Uh, so those seven members run the building, they run the temple, they do the day-to-day -day business for the temple. The rest of us as members, we just get to enjoy having fun with the Shrine. Well, let's talk about uh, some of the good works that the Shriners do, not only locally, but across the country. We have, 
at one time we had 22 hospitals. Uh, with the changing times, there's a lot of our hospitals, like the one here in Tampa that sh has shut down. Mm -hmm. It's moving up north. And we're constantly, the, the international headquarters is out on Rocky Point. And, and you say Shriners in Tampa, everybody knows what you're talking about. They don't know about Egypt. They know about Rocky Point. Mm -hmm. That's the Imperial. That is the worldwide headquarters, and that's where the Imperial divan uh, work, and that's where they do their business meetings and stuff like that at. But they're the ones that r help run the hospitals that we have. We're changing a lot of them to outpatient clinics because we can run it cheaper. Mm -hmm. And in today's world, everything is, is based on the dollar. Yep. And with our commercials that you see on TV, uh, money, you never have enough. But our the people that we have with Alec and, and those, we couldn't have asked for a better spokesperson than, than we had with Alec. Everybody knows him. He's, he's a great kid. And our commercials now are the best they've ever been, and that's, that's where a lot of our donations come at now is from our Shriner, Shriner Hospitals for Children commercials. I think the commercial's excellent. I know what commercials you're talking about and the kids that are in the commercials, but you're right. I mean, he's quite this little spokesperson. Yes, he is. Uh, he does a really great job. Uh, well, I'm so glad you mentioned about Rocky Point because, honestly, in all the times we've met before and talked, I, I didn't know that, that that was the, you know, the the head the head thing of all the thing was there yes, uh, that is really great and I've been to your new facility on um, uh, South 41 uh, on the Palm River uh, on the river I should say and it is a fabulous facility and I know that right after it was completed I think uh, you had the uh, Cliff Curry had the Trey Curry Foundation um, annual fundraiser there yes ma'am yeah, that was amazing. Because I yeah. know Cliff Cliff Curry is also a, a Shriner. Yes, ma'am. He's a Shriner, too. He is our temple uh, attorney, so he helps us out there with our legal aspects. Um, so, yeah, we're all just one big family. Well, that was, uh, I know, some disappointing news for some folks about the Shrine Hospital here closing. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the good works don't keep on going on, because they do. Oh, yes, ma'am, they do. And... Uh, the EOS machine that we have there uh, on USF campus is going to be moved at some point up to Gainesville. Uh, we still do our operations at, at Tampa General. So we're still working in the community. Um, our facility that does the uh, prosthetics is going to remain here in Tampa. Good. So we still, and we're still, what we do as Shriners, there's 11 so-called temples in Florida. Mm -hmm. And what we raise money for is to help pay mileage for the children to travel wherever they need to go. And that may be a plane ride, mm -hmm. if it's an emergency, mm -hmm. or just a doctor's appointment. And we're starting a lot more telemed places throughout Florida to cut down one on doctors having to travel and also our patients having to travel so much. So that, you know, we're still supporting the hospital. We're still doing great things for the children, which is what Shriners is all about, is, is the kids. That's right. Shriners all about the children and helping them with all kinds of life-threatening and, and life-altering uh, diseases and conditions and whatnot. And people should really understand that, that it's good work, and that's what it's all about, the children. Yes, ma'am. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit more, more about the Shrine organization before we launch into uh, fundraising. Anything you want to share that we haven't covered already? Well, we're, we're used to be, we were with, uh, in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Philippines. Now we're all over. We know we're in Germany. <clears throat> we have Bolivia, uh, Brazil. We got like 196 temples worldwide. So when we have our annual meeting, and one's coming up here in a couple months in July up in Minneapolis, membership members from all 196 temples will travel there for our annual meeting. So you get to meet all these other Shriners from around the world. Um, and well, it's, it's just, oh, it is. It's awesome to see everybody from around the world. Get, you meet new friends. We actually, Egypt Shrine here in Tampa, it has leadership uh, coverage for the Guatemala Shrine Club. So, wow. So we do a lot of work with Guatemala. We go down there, see the uh, guys down there. Um, that we've done, there's been a couple orphanages down there in the past that had a fire. We had to rush people, our children out of Guatemala to Houston, to our burned hospital. 
And those guys down there are just absolutely fabulous. I, I love each and every one of them for what they do. They work hard. They raise a lot of money for Shriners down there. And, and when we have an emergency like that, a lot of the money comes from the people right there in Guatemala to get the, to do the life-saving operations that we have to do for those kids. And they're just a wonderful group of guys down there in Guatemala. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. So I know that in my area of South County, um, the Shrine Club always used to have the pancake breakfast twice a year. Yes, ma'am. And it was an eagerly anticipated event. It drew people from all over South County, would come to Community Hall in Sun City Center on South Pebble Beach and uh, enjoy the pancake breakfast. Uh, and then COVID came, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> the C word, right? I was like, <laughs> like, like ni whatever life was before and what life will be after, I mean, it will never be the same. But as anything, good things come out of bad things too. So, but now you're not, you guys are not doing the Shrine Pancake Breakfast down in our area anyway. No, ma'am. We had to look at things. We were investing about a thousand man hours into that. And we did well for many years. Well, everybody kind of caught on to that. So now everybody's doing pancake breakfast mm -hmm. down in Sun City. Mm -hmm. A lot of the churches are. So we've kind of looked at it and we've gone to a different approach. We still have our two events, but we have a gala in the spring and we have a gala in the fall. So we're doing, we're playing around trying to find things that work down in Sun City. Uh, our next one coming up will be in October. We're going to turn Community Hall into a 1950 malt shop. Yes, I, you know, so we should talk about that because um, you're gonna, well, I think this might be a good time to take a break too. We're not quite a, really halfway through, but it doesn't matter. My guest in the chair on Connecting with Kim today is Denny Hardy, who is a past potentate for the Egypt Shrine here in Tampa, and he is currently the president of the uh, Sun City Center Shrine Club, and uh, who are near and dear to my heart. So now we've shifted our fundraising activities from uh, pancake breakfast twice a year to having the galas, a gala in the spring and a gala in the fall, and now your gala in the fall is going to be uh, a 1950s malt shop. Yes, ma'am. We're, we're, we're so excited about this. Um, Mainly only because a lot of the people that live in Sun City grew up in 1950 malt shops, and that's what we want to do. Well, they became of age. They were teenagers. Yes. They started dating and all that kind of that's stuff. That's when malt shops were big. Yeah. Uh, we're working with a couple car clubs. We're going to try to have some old cars down there. Uh, we've got milkshake machines. Uh, so we've got some girls still trying to convince them to put the skates on to do, the, <laughs> to do that for us. But, uh, yeah, we're having milkshake machines. And it's going to be October 22nd. Uh, it's on a Saturday night from 5 to 9. $30 in the front door, and that includes your meals. You're going to have hamburgers and french fries. All we that got malt shop kind of stuff. All that malt shop. Yeah, cherry Cokes, we're going to have all that oh for gosh. you. Okay. So we're doing our best to, to turn the community center into a 1950s malt shop. We and, have, and is there going to be like a sock op too? Is there going to oh, be yes, dancing and music? Yeah, and Dan, we have uh, Dan the DJ there going to be with us. He's playing all 1950 music. We're having a, a dress-up contest. We're giving away 50 bucks to the man and the lady that, that are dressed the best. So we're, we're, having, we're, we're having a lot of fun with this. The, the planning uh, must be fun, right? Oh, it is. It's and, fabulous. And, and so the costume is going to be, the award for the costume is going to be like the person who's most dressed like a 50s malt shop person. Yes, ma'am. Like with the, the poodle skirt. The poodle skirts, yes. And the, yes. And the uh, uh, black and white Oxford. Yep. And, yeah, all that, right? The, the cigarettes rolled up yeah. in your, so your T-shirt. Yeah, hair, Brill cream. Brill cream. cream. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can still buy brill cream. You can. You can. I actually have a tube of it at the house when I do 1950 events. But, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, we're getting a lot of good feedback from the people in the community talking to folks about it. So we're looking, you know, somewhere between two and 300 attending. Um, and, and the money that we make off of that mm. will, the, the other big thing that we do besides our two galas is in December, we do a Christmas party for two elementary schools. Well, I really want to spend some time on this because uh, not that not that I don't like the the 1950s malt shop thing, and I hope I hope I could be there. Um, and I'm going to start looking for an outfit immediately. Uh, but I want to talk about the work that you're going to do for the two schools, and we and we need to you know talk about those two schools and what you're going to do and why because I think this is just wonderful. Myself. Yes, ma'am. It all goes back to. Shriners are all about kids. 
and that's what drives us down there. Um, we work with Reddick Elementary and Waimama Elementary. They're, they're two of the poor schools in the county. Um, we handle four first grade classes, about 200 kids between the two schools. Uh, and a lot of these kids have never ever seen Santa Claus. Um, you know, and a lot of them, the little gift bags that we give them, that is all that they get for Christmas because they come from very poor homes. Uh, when Santa Claus is there and they see him, we have to have an interpreter so that the child can speak with Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but we go all out for this. Last year, it was fabulous. Uh, we had some new people show up and they are smitten. They got bit by the bug. You know, that's all they've talked about since December is what are, when are we going to start planning when the next yeah, one? <laughs> yeah. So we're doing that. Um, got Santa Claus all lined up for the kids. And w the big thing that we're doing is we're, we're going to the community now to see if folks want to help us. In the past, we've spent money out of our club mm -hmm. from personal donations to buy the gifts for the kids. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful group of elderly ladies in Sun City that take uh, pillowcases and they turn them into little backpacks. So they, they do about 250 a year for us, and then that's what we fill up with toys and we give to the kids. Uh, and that's what we're working on right now is we're gonna try to see if the Sun City community will, will help us out, give donations that will um, help us, because I really wanna up the ante mm -hmm. on the toys, not coloring books, you know, not baseball, stuff like that. I want to give them trucks and, and dolls and, and things that they can play with because, like, again, a lot of these kids get nothing for Christmas. And we want to, when you see their eyes, it's, it's when they see Santa Claus for the first time. It's oh, unreal. my gosh, it must be. I mean, you must just, like, melt, right? You do. You just melt. We, last year there was this one little girl. She was there, and, and she looked like an Olympic racer on the tracks when it was her turn to go see Santa Claus. <laughs> It was fabulous. She was checking oh, she was. She could, right? It was like, yeah. So she to... runs up there and stands in front of Santa Claus, and she's just standing there looking at him. It's like something you've never seen before because she never has. And she just falls on him and hugs him. Oh. And, and she stands up, and she's looking at and she does this like three times, just falls on him oh. and to hold him. And everybody's got tears in their eyes. You know, we're, we're trying to hide it and things like that, oh. you know. But it's when you see that. You can't help but fall in love with the kids, and we know that what we do is the right thing. You, so have you guys thought about videoing that, that party, so that you can use that as a marketing tool and show people, like, you know, this is what we do at this Christmas party, and this is the impact that it has on these children. That would be something that we could look at. Yeah, because when you <clears throat> see a child light, face light up like that, you know, in front of Santa Claus, they're getting gifts, they're having a party, they're enjoying the, I mean, that's like, you don't even need words. Yeah. We're calling, this year, we, I started, what I've done is I, I've created this campaign and I'm calling it the magic of Christmas. Because I, I believe mm. Santa Claus is real me and that's what this is all about. <laughs> I'm, I was going to ask you as, because you as never looked like this before. No, I'm, I'm not. But as a clown, I'm going to up my ability and I'm going to school to be a professional Santa Claus. Oh really? Based off my experience from last year with with what I've seen and a couple of my clowns are professional Santa Clauses. You go to school. I didn't know that. You have to go to school to be a professional Santa Claus? Yes ma'am. You got to go to school you to be see, a clown. You see what I'm telling you about this show folks? You learn stuff all the time on Connecting with Kim. Actually the group that, that I will belong to is called the Real Bearded Santa Clauses. So you have to be able to grow a beard to belong to them. It's not wearing over the ears or anything that you got to have your own whiskers wow. so that when the kids come up because they're going to yank on that's it, what right? they do yeah uh, most every kid that gets on santa claus lap <laughs> he wants to pull the whiskers to make sure that you're real you know and that's that's the great thing about it and that's why i'm doing this is to be there to be to be santa claus for a kid it is I mean, my God, it, your heart just busts when you see this. We're, and, we're, we're, the whole crew here, the whole crew here at TBAE right now is trying not to like, <laughs> woo, you know, something else. We're so touched. So, 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 how long does Santa Claus uh, school take? Because I'm really curious about this. Well, there's there's two or three different ones. Uh, there's one coming up in August. It's a weekend. You're there for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. um, and then there's a couple other weekends that you go. You start out 
working with people. They they help you get uh, your events and stuff like that. And then as you start building on it, then you get your own clients. But yeah, it it's not just put on a Santa Claus suit and go be Santa Claus. It's, I, I this is like I mean I'm like blown away because I had no idea about this. I mean, and I'm and I'm glad to know it. So tell me, uh, so that when is the party going to be in December? It's going to be the twelfth. Monday the 12th and Thursday the 15th. Okay, Monday the 12th, Thursday the 15th of December. And yep. where is the party going to be? At, at the schools. Oh, we go, at the schools. Yes, okay. ma'am. We go right to the schools. That way the kids don't have to travel. They don't miss class. Right. We get set up. Santa Claus is there. The teacher brings them down, and, and we hear them coming down the hallway because they are just, <laughs> yeah, they're like a golf ball in a tiled room. Um, they're just having the time of their life, and, and the Last year we were taking pictures with phones. This year I bought a new 35 millimeter digital camera. We're going to set it up, take pictures, put them up on our uh, website account, and that way the school can download the pictures for the kids and send them home. So uh, tell me, um, how long is the party going to be from like what time to what time? We're normally at, it, at one of the schools for about two hours to go through the, because there's about 100 kids per school that we go through. So we're there for a couple hours. The first one on Monday takes a little longer because we got to set up and get all that stuff done. But once we're set up, then Thursday runs real quick. And Monday is Reddick Elementary. Thursday will be Waimama. Okay, now are the parents invited to come in, uh, observe this, or attend at all? Or no, ma'am. Okay, so it's strictly at the school with the kids and the teachers and the staff at the school. Yes, ma'am. I think that's so wonderful. Well, I'm just going to give a huge shout out right now to you folks in Sun City Center and in South County to encourage you to be as generous as possible. You all have enough tchotchkes. You all have enough stuff in your house. In fact, you all have too much. And so instead of buying Christmas gifts, for each other, go out there and contribute for this. And we know in our community, because we just had the Ukrainian relief, and we've had other, we have Toys for Tots every yep. year at the chamber. I, I volunteer at the chamber, so I see all this stuff. And our, our folks, I have to say, are incredibly, incredibly generous people. I mean, you put the need out there, and they respond. Yep. And if you, if you've, if you get to see these kids one time, it's like, yeah, You're there's done. no limit to. You're done for. Yeah, my right? extra spending money doesn't exist no Guess. more because it's, it's. A, I've already started donating this year to the Christmas party in December. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, golly, now would this be a fun thing for TBAE to cover? Is this Christmas party? Because you're right. Those two schools are some of the poorest in Hillsborough County, yep. and it's a, it just breaks your heart, and it just you know it shouldn't be that way. But you are doing such a tremendous thing for these kids because I think to see a child's face light up, just just for the party in Santa Claus, but to have the gifts that they won't. I mean, I know children when I used to volunteer with the Hope Fund. There's children there that. They've never even seen a magazine. Mm -mm. They, 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 they've never had a magazine in their house, something that I think most of us just take for granted, you know, magazine. Yeah. I mean, it's really important stuff you're doing, Denny. Yeah, the kids, when they, and, and as soon as they get in there, they want to they look in the bag to see what they got. Oh, of course. And, and we've been playing with it, but now we, we've got it set up so that Santa Claus gives each child the bag. So it comes from Santa Claus. Oh, that is excellent. Yeah. I love that idea. So yeah, now was, they make that connection yes. between Santa Claus, the good guy, and I get gifts from Santa Claus. Yep. I, I'm sure the parents of these children appreciate this also. Yeah, they, we just, I, I hope they do because I can't tell you how much it means to us and what, how it's changed Sun City Center Shrine Club seeing what we've done for these kids and the new people that are there because now they're already volunteering they're bringing their families in my wife you know my wife saw what we were giving the kids so she went out and shopping and she was supposed to go buy like 200 puzzles well she comes home with a whole car full of stuff where we spent like 500 dollars <laughs> on gifts you know but that's just that's how much it affects you and it pulls on your heartstrings because one we know that we're make just even if it's just for a little bit we're making these child's lives so much better and 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 there for an instant 
that they believe and it's the miracle of Christmas. Well, and, and this is what the Shrine Club is all about. The Shrine Club is about children, giving to children, taking care of children, helping children. So this is just another uh, iteration of what you all have been doing uh, throughout your history. So we are down to the last couple of minutes of the show. Is there anything about uh, the Shrine Club or your efforts that you want to share that we haven't talked about yet? Because I want to make sure you get that in. Yeah, the great thing about the Christmas party is we get to introduce the schools and the families to the Shrine because there's kids there that don't know about us that we see may have cleft, cleft lip or a burn that we can now offer our services to these children where we would never know it about these children. So we've the Christmas party allows us to bring our healing doctors and wonderful nurses that we have into the schools where we can help children and make their life better by introducing them to Santa Claus for the first time for some of them, giving them gifts because they don't get any. It's just, it's over the top. I love it. And the synergy of that, right? So now you've uh, done something wonderful for a child and also now you can identify if they need additional help and you can provide that additional help which they might not be able to receive any other way. Exactly. Well, I could just, oh, we could sit here and talk about the, <laughs> uh, but we're out of time. We've got the uh, Sock Hop Funders are coming in October. We've got the beautiful, wonderful Christmas parties at Reddick and Waimama Elementary in December, early December, December 12th, if, if I recall. And I want to thank you so much for being my guest today on Connecting with Kim Denny. It's thank a pleasure you. to have you again. So good to be with you. Oh, thank you. So that's all we have time for today on Connecting with Kim. And we just want to say this is our mission. Our mission on Connecting with Kim is to keep bringing you information about people, places, and things which will keep you up to date, informed, and will help you live a better life in our little corner of paradise because we do live in paradise. And when we can be of service to others, that is the greatest thing in the world. So take care. Be safe, and I'll see you next time on Connecting with Kim.